um, part of what I want you to be thinking about. The idea of establishing a positive environment is really much more difficult to do than it sounds. I want you to establish an environment in which the students identify the environment as positive. If when we go into the school, 80% of the students say, I've been acknowledged for behaving well, then whatever you're doing is good, right? There isn't one way to do it right. Here's essentially the two things that we found. One, we as adults tend to overestimate how positive we are. We think we're nicer than they do, okay? <laughs> Second is you are very nice. What I want you to think about is not just what you are going to do to make your classroom work, but what you're going to do to make the whole school a more effective environment. There are many adults in the building who are uncomfortable with how to deliver acknowledgments for doing things the right way. And there are all sorts of reasons for that. Um, but the point is, regardless of what the reasons are, most people can agree, we want the students to behave well, we want the students to identify that we want, it, we want this to be a welcoming, warm, productive, predictable environment. We could agree to that. How do we create that in a way that isn't artificial and inappropriate? We do not want to turn teachers into vending machines, right? We don't want you walking around. We don't want kids coming up and saying, I'm being nice, give me something. Right? I mean, that, that's not. What we want is we want kids who are, I know that never happens in Orange County, right? <laughs> so let's, let's think about what the science teaches us. The science teaches us that in all honesty, most of these programs are about 60% for the kids and 40% for the adults. The 40% for the adults is it helps the adults to maintain a more positive focus. So create something that will actually make it easy. Now here's part of, here's examples of a whole bunch of different types of tokens and things and points and, uh, you know, uh, paw points and Taurus bucks and stuff like that. The truth is, the thing that you give is almost never the important part. The important part is whether you actually connect with a kid and say, I really appreciate what you just did. So it is always the personal connection, not the issue. The two things that we've really learned, two things. Part of it is it's really important to reward behavior, not people. So it's, if, if the student gets something and doesn't know why she got it, then it is not a functional reward. So the issue is, I mean, there was uh, one of the stories I tell, I was in Denver, and this one young lady got the Student of the Week Award, and she was blissed out. I mean, she, got, she may have got a car or something, I don't know, but she was very happy, <laughs> right? And I said, congratulations, that's really great. I said, what'd you get that for? She said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> Bad. All right, no, seriously, that's not good. You reward behavior, not people. That means you always define what it is she did, and that's what you acknowledge. And our ability to do that is critical to something like this actually working. So the, the other thing that we want is we always want to make sure that we are building autonomy. We want kids to be self-managers. We don't want them to be dependent. We don't want them to behave well in one environment and not in another. We don't want them to walk in and say, well, if you want me to behave well, what are you gonna give me, right? No, I mean, seriously, let's, everybody's on the same page. We want kids to be self-managers. We want them to be in a situation that actually works. So, in part, what are the ways that you do where they feel acknowledged and appreciated for doing things the right way? What are the ways in which you instill the positive, right? The positive self-talk that's gonna get you what you want. Here's an example of what one administrator did. 
This pad of paper, if you look, you see there's little light colored tags here and there are blue tags down below. The light ones, this is actually the office discipline referral form. So here are the problem behaviors, here's the, the motivation, here's who did what, when, where. So that's a problem behavior. These are positives, right? Now I want you to look up there. Look at the number of light colored ones and the number of blue ones that are on the pad. The only real rule they had is you don't get a new pad until all the blues are gone. <laughs> right? Think about, so think about the message that that gives. Remember, most of the reward systems, 60% for the kids, 40% for the adults. The other big message, the other big message, remember the triangle? 80% of the kids typically are satisfied and effective with green level supports. Another set require yellow, another set require red. Essentially, kids who are at risk for yellow and red supports are oftentimes coming from families in which it's very unclear what is really happening with adults. They distrust adult feedback. One of the reasons for increasing the clarity of what are expectations and the clarity of the consequences is so that you're actually able to reach a larger group of kids. If you go into environments where people say, we don't want a formal reward system, we don't think kids should actually be, need this at this point in time, essentially the thing you, I worry about is what we're really doing is making the circle smaller. We're saying for kids who come well socialized, each of whom have read at least 3,000 hours before they show up, all from families that are intact, right, speaking English eloquently and fluently, we can be successful. We can all be successful, all right? The issue is it's easy to teach kids who are real active learners. In fact, part of what I got to tell you, I think one of the banes of education are smart kids. Smart kids learn even if we teach badly. It's the kids with disabilities, it's the kids who have real difficulty learning who will teach you to teach brilliantly because every error you make shows up in their behavior. All right, part of what we're learning is we're building systems that are gonna work for a larger group of kids. Barb is standing over there because it's my SD that, or my cue that I'm supposed to get ready and go to the airport. So here are the messages that I wanna give. I'm gonna stop and Barb and Christy are going to pick up. You're going to get more information about what some of the research literature says. You're going to have some of the issues related to pulling the different pieces together. The thing that I really wanted to bring is I want to bring a sense of sincere and deep appreciation. The fact that you would come here this late in the year, gear up, get ready and think about what's going to happen next year, that says a lot. That is, that is a significant, that is the reason why many of us are in this field, all right? You look around you, the care and the concern for helping kids is what binds us together. Big messages, the social behavior of kids is central to achieving the learning outcomes that we all are looking for. Two, if we're really gonna build the discipline systems and the behavioral support systems at work, we need to do it for the whole school, not just for those kids who create problems. And third, I want you to look at how your whole faculty can move to invest in prevention. Once you've invested in prevention, then we'll add the yellow and the red tiers. But investing in prevention is the smallest thing you can do that'll have the biggest impact in terms of the quality of your learning environments. I wish you well. Thank you.